Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to David Carter's The Catalyst Podcast, where we have conversations that provoke positive change. And I'm really delighted today to have as a as a guest on this podcast the executive chef <laughs> of the Asterisk Supper Club. <laughs> yes, sir. Chef Desmond Reed. How you doing, my brother? I'm fine, sir. How are you? Man, I'm great. It's it's really great to have you on here today. And I have some questions I just want to talk to you about. Um, because I've uh, I've known you for quite some time. Yeah. Um, yes. <laughs> I think since you were, I, I think I've known you for 14 years. I, if you want to tell your age, how long? Yeah. How old? How long is that? I'm 28. Uh, moved to Columbus, Ohio mm-hmm. in 2008. So you moved from Columbus, Ohio, from where? New Haven, Connecticut. New Haven, New Haven. Connecticut. <laughs> <laughs> the nutmeg state. The oh, nutmeg. Uh, Yukon Huskies. Oh yeah. You, know, you bleed blue. I bleed blue. Okay. All right. Cool. <laughs> so you, you in 2008. Eight. We and you were a member of, of, of the church where, uh, where I pastor. Mm-hmm. And I, I think if I'm correct, uh, well, you were a drummer. I, I was. You were, yes. you were a drummer. And we gave you your first set of drums. And, you did. And, and so what was that like when you, you, were, you were 14 years old? I was 12. 12, 12, 12, 12 13. 12, 13. Okay, you yeah. was a youngin'. I was young, yeah. I was <laughs> Okay, you're 12 years old. Yeah, uh, you're at this church. You get these drums, and how long have you been drumming, or or what was the situation with that? So, drumming that was, you you gave me my first experience in drumming in church. Mm-hmm. Um, I've always dreamed of it. Mm-hmm. I had pots and pans all around the house before that. <laughs> ah, you had pots and pans. Pots and pans. Ah, so it you connects. The drums, it, it, I see. See what you did there. Pots and pans. You're beating on the pots and pans yeah. and drumming. You got a drum set, and you were drumming at the church. What was that yeah. like uh, as a young man? Uh, drumming at the church it was it was amazing mm-hmm. it was amazing it was a dream come true mm-hmm. you know to um for me to have a dream mm-hmm. and somebody else see that you know it can be fulfilled they can fulfill that you know for them to trust me you know you you only get one shot in a way mm-hmm. and if I didn't pull through if I didn't come through and say I'm gonna do this and give it my all mm-hmm. practice you know put my time into it and mm-hmm. then you know return the gifts back to God back to you guys mm-hmm. it wouldn't have worked out well, it really did work out. It's it interesting <laughs> you said you were drumming in in the in in the house on pots and pans. Yeah. What was that like for your um for your mom and dad? What was that like with you beating on the on the, oh. on the pots and pans <laughs> and then transitioning because yeah. you know before before we gave you the drum set, mm. of course we uh, consulted with your parents mm. and said, you know, you think that'll be all right? Yeah. <laughs> so, so what was that like, my brother? Um, so before that, you know, I. There, there's some times like, all right, Des, you can do this from this time to this time. Mm-hmm. All right, you know, maybe not so hard. All right, uh, Des, you broke all of our spoons, so maybe I have to hold off a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know, um, but then <laughs> yeah, I, I was breaking, right. I was getting into the music. Uh-huh. <laughs> but um, mm. transitioning to the drum set, you know, um, that gave me time to practice even more. You mm. know, to really like hone my skill, my gift. You know, um, and just do it. At home, where I felt comfortable, mm. you know, I can mess up as many times as I wanted. I didn't have to feel ashamed, like, oh, I don't have it. I can keep going. Keep a young going. man drumming in the kitchen or in the house <laughs> on pots and pans, <laughs> and now you are an executive chef, yeah. right? We're gonna we're gonna talk we're gonna talk <laughs> about that. But before we get to your executive chefdom yeah. at the Astor Supper Club, um, I know personally mm. how great of a chef you are. <laughs> Thank you. Because for uh, several years, you were my personal private chef. I was. I you know? was. And, you know, if I, if I trust anybody with my food, <laughs> you have to know. Yeah. Because you knew, my, uh, you knew my taste. You knew, And you asked me mm. what did I want. And then you catered to my palate. You yeah. know, I have lactose intolerance. So you built around that. So mm. talk about that whole experience and how it prepared you for yeah. what you're doing right now. So I will say you were the first client I've had as a as a personal chef. So so wow. yeah. Well, you yeah. didn't know that. You didn't no, know I that. Didn't. Now I'm letting out the secrets. No, but, you, but you see how yeah. much I trusted you yeah. and the gift that's within you. Yeah. Okay. And so what I saw years ago, mm. now people are experiencing. Yeah. In a much greater way at the supper club. So yes. go ahead. So definitely, um, as you've been my first client, there was a lot to learn. Mm-hmm. You know, um, going through school, I actually. Uh, when I started cooking for you, I was on a break from school. Mm-hmm. Um, I started in 2014. I think about 2016 was when I started cooking, okay. I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And I was like, yeah, I'm I'm great. I can do all of this stuff. I ask you what you want. Oh, you want. I remember one time I made you lasagna that yeah. had no cheese in it. Mm-hmm. And you're like, what in the world would you do to this? You know, and um, it's great to to cook the food. Mm-hmm. Um, but like you said, I was cooking food to your specifications, mm-hmm. what you wanted. It's not all about me, the chef. Mm-hmm. If I cook for me, that's that's great. Mm-hmm. I love it. But if I'm giving you a service as as a chef, I'm part of the hospitality industry. Okay. I'm serving you, you mm-hmm. know. Um, I'm still giving you some of what I do, mm-hmm. but I'm doing it for you, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so all through that, it was all learning, you know, I'm learning different things. So you cut your teeth in my kitchen. I did. <laughs> I did. <laughs> no, but, I but, did. That, but really, because I, I really trusted you, like I yeah. said, you know, the, the gift that, you know, that's within you. And when I remember one thing I, I when I, in church, um, I was, I was preaching cause I watch, uh, food network all the yeah. time. Right. And I watch Chopped all the time. And we got to get you on Chopped. I would love to. I would Hashtag love to. Chopped. Ashley, we're going to send this to them. Yeah, food <laughs> and one of the things I said, I said, um, and please, please receive this in the way. Yeah. yeah. I said, I don't trust a skinny chef. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Because, you know, a, a skinny chef, and not that, you know, and to me, that means when people love what they do they yeah. look like what they do yeah right and the passion and everything so talk a little bit about that you know not yeah. i wasn't meaning to be you know yeah. no no uh demeaning or anything like yeah. that but sometimes when i see a skinny chef i'm like hmm <laughs> yeah hmm. so what about that desmond yeah so no i definitely believe that 100 percent mm-hmm. um the key word you said is passion yes yes um that's i feel like that's what i am whatever i get into mm-hmm. um there has to be passion behind it yeah Cause it won't last long. I don't want to waste my time. I don't want to waste anybody else's time. Um, all through my life, there's been passion in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. Um, since I was young, uh, I always give this story. Uh, my first dish I ever created. Uh, before we moved to Columbus, I was hot dog casserole. Yeah. <laughs> hot, dog hot dog casserole. Uh, what were the ingredients that besides hot dog? <laughs> um, French fries, onions. And uh, maybe some salt, pepper, mm-hmm. and some uh, dried parsley. Does it have cheese on there? Is that like a, a the, poutine? <laughs> almost. <laughs> it was a mini uh, precursor to a poutine. To a poutine. I okay. was getting there. Yeah, I didn't. Okay. <laughs> but um, my family ate that, or at least I cooked it for them maybe two to three times a week until they were just like, Des, we can't do it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I perfected that one, you know, mm-hmm. and I was happy. I was like, hey, I made this dish. I made dinner. Mm-hmm. And, and from there, you know, I was I was always looking for no matter what anybody else thought, you know, I knew I love cooking. This mm-hmm. is what I'm going to do. You know, so there's that passion behind it. Studying when I didn't have to be. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm going to look up this. I'm going to look up that. Um, watching, like you said, the Food Network. Mm-hmm. Emerald Lagasse was the first. Isn't Emerald the bomb? Emerald. Yes. Yeah. He's, Bam, the, he's right? the first one. And I have another story. I started watching Emerald because of the band. Mm-hmm. Doc Gibbs and the Emerald Live Band. Yeah. Drums. Yes. See, in music. That's how it, it all coalesced. Food. Like. Okay. Yeah. So I started watching uh, from Doc Gibbs. Their opening credits. Mm-hmm. Doc Gibbs was playing, and I'm like, all right. And then Emerald comes in, bam. You know, does his cooking. And then on their uh, commercial segments, Doc Gibbs and the band take it out. They come back in with music. Little by little, I start shifting from Doc Gibbs to Emerald. Emerald. See, and we're yeah. talking about catalysts, right? There are some things that happen in our lives yeah. that provoke a positive change yeah and there's a shift from hmm. or transition from one thing to that's that's fascinating yeah. man yeah. because i used to watch it and because emerald's from you know Nolans, yeah right? oh yeah and so and and the, the gumbo but just the style and the flair yeah but also marrying the passion for music exactly with exactly. the food is yeah. that kind of what you do that so I will say in the beginning that's what I did. Mm-hmm, okay, that's what I did. Um, and I loved. It. I still love music now. Mm-hmm. I don't play drums anymore, or I like to get back into it. What? I don't. I don't you play drums. You, wait, I don't. Wait a minute. There's gonna be a body. <laughs> get a body bag. No. <laughs> Go ahead, man. No, I don't play. Um, I love to, but mm-hmm. music is all through me. Mm-hmm. Anytime I'm doing something, there's always music in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. There's music. Um, but I take that same passion that I have for music and food. I combine them, Mm -hmm. you know, um, I want to, how I, I guess music, there's a story, right? There's a story in every song. Um, in my food, there's going to be a story. There's going to be a story. It may either be the story of how I'm feeling that day Mm -hmm. 
or, you know, where I've come when I do dinners, when I did dinner parties, mm -hmm. you know, there's five to six courses. Mm -hmm. You're going to get a whole story through that. Each dish is going to tell a certain story, certain part of a story, you know, that I wanted to. Um, so I feel like they both do kind of come together and I, I try to bring them in that way. And that's fascinating. Your, your, your food tells a story mm. and, you know, and the mood. One of the things that I always hear on, on Food Network and um, when I watch Master Chef and yeah. Next Level Chef, <laughs> yeah. all those things is you have to cook with love. Yeah, yeah. And if it's not love in it, mm. you can feel the lack thereof yeah. in the food. Is that, is that right? That's true. That is very true. Yeah. I mean, your, your plate is a canvas. We're, we're artists. Same with music. <laughs> it, it all, it, it, come on, it comes together. It comes you're, you're together. A, you're a food artist. So we're, we're an artist, you know. Mm -hmm. I can't just give you mashed potatoes and green beans and a piece of chicken. Or, what some, a, or, or some hot dog cast. Or some hot, I mean, yeah. <laughs> but you started from there and you elevated. And, and, and then you, you've made some, you know, you've made some improvements and some elevations. Yeah. And some transitions. So yeah. how, how, is, how did you um, transition from music into pursuing a career in the culinary arts? How did that okay. happen? So uh, this is about 2011. Mm -hmm. I was a sophomore at Columbus Alternative High School. I was at your church, and mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? The Worship Center of the Central Ohio. Worship Center of Central Ohio. Central Ohio. Right road. Yeah. Yes, sir. Hey, that for home, home for years. Still yes, home. Sir. Still mm -hmm. home. Um, and at Columbus Alternative High School, we had to do internship. And I'm like, I don't know what I really want to do. I know I love to cook at home. Ah, uh, okay. But I'm like, I never thought about, like, cooking as a job. I'm just like, oh, I can go on Food Network. Mm -hmm. I didn't really understand that, oh, there are chefs who do this every day, like, in restaurants, you know? Um, so you hooked me up with somebody in the church, Miss Legina Johnson, mm -hmm. and she brought me into, uh, the catering company, Doc 580. Mm -hmm. That's where I worked, honestly, until they closed. Mm -hmm. Um, my first day, 50 pound bag of potatoes. They just said, just quarter them and put them in the, in the container with water mm -hmm. and then put them in the fridge. And I'm like, this is what you got to do. Mm -hmm. I, I thought it was glamorous. You know, I, I thought I was going to be up there. Adding my own spices, mm -hmm. you know, doing whatever I wanted to do. But and here you are cutting 50 pounds. Here I, yeah. Literally. Bag of potatoes. Bag of potatoes. So what did that teach you, though? What did that teach you? Persistence. Mm -hmm. Persistence. You, if you start anywhere at the top, there's nowhere else to go. Mm -hmm. I started at the bottom. I had to learn, you know. Uh, there was the executive chef there. There were sous chefs. There were line cooks. I couldn't just come in as a 12, 13-year-old mm -hmm. and think I'm just going to run the place. I was learning. I was literally learning, you know, with no experience at all. I came in, thought I could run it, and I was. So what did that, what did that teach you? Okay, you came yeah. in, in here, but you see there are levels to this. There, yeah. And there in levels. order to be at the top, mm. you need to know what goes on on all those different levels. Talk yeah. a little bit about that. So, yeah, starting there, I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm the prep cook. I'm not a chef. Mm-hmm. I'm not as much as I feel like I am, you know, my mom, oh baby, you're my chef. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, when you get out into the no, when you get out into the real world, they don't call you chef. They don't. You, you haven't know? earned, right? <laughs> it, you haven't earned. You it, haven't yeah. earned the title. Okay, a, a yeah. chef. Okay. Yeah. So I'm um, here I am. I'm prepping. I'm scaling out recipes for, you know, the uh more experienced people to cook. Mm -hmm. They're not trusting me with cooking yet. Dad, you're gonna dice these onions, Dad, you're gonna weigh out this salt, or you're gonna measure out this flour. Mm -hmm. You know, they're getting me into, you know the repetitive nature of, you know, being in the kitchen, being on my feet for eight to 10 hours. But also the, re the repetitive nature, but also your knife cuts. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, see, right. <laughs> yeah. Because your food, what you prepare is mm. what they're preparing for. Exactly. So you have, they have to make sure that you're doing it right and they can trust you. Yeah. You know, with your preparation, yeah, with your mise en place. Exactly. There we go. That's just wrong. I'll grab it. I mean, yeah. You're about to be sous chef by the end of this. <laughs> hey, I'll come in and I'll learn. Yeah. You know, because even though I, I know about Julianna and, yeah. you know, and how to hold the, the knife and don't do this, Alex, Alex Gorn Shelley says, you know, when you do that, she'll put a red mark on it. Yeah. yeah. How to hold the instruments properly yeah. in, order, in order to prep so yeah. the, food, the food does not just, it has to look good. Yes. Yeah. As well as taste good. Right. So there, there, there's the artistry. Yeah. The canvas part of it. Mm -hmm. Right. That's true. That is true. Okay. So, you know, um, do you have any other kind of passions? Any, any, any other passions um, that you, that you might want to pursue or 
Or is it is it food right now? Food, food is my life. That that's what I've made it. Mm. You know, I love it. Um, there's so many different avenues, uh, within the mm. hospitality industry within food alone that I can pursue. Mm-hmm. Um, I always tell people my end goal. You know, later on in life, I do want to be a teacher. I want to go back to Columbus Downtown High School where I graduated from mm-hmm. and uh, teach their culinary section. Okay. Um, that is, that's one thing I'm, I'm leaning towards now. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm working forward. I know the steps I have to take to get in there. Mm-hmm. So, you know, this is a one step along that road where I'm going to eventually get. So you want to, you want to replicate or duplicate or to be a catalyst right? yeah. mm-hmm. in the lives of some other persons yeah. so they can have, know that there are different options. Yes. They have different opportunities, th- different things they can't. So you want to be an instructor. I do. Mm-hmm. I do. So what, what brought that on? How, how did that come? How did that come about? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, um, definitely through Columbus Downtown High School, my first year, I loved it. Mm-hmm. I was like, I get to cook half the day mm-hmm. and then, you know, go to school the other half of the day. Mm-hmm. Um, as much as I loved the experience, I knew there were some things that I was lacking, mm-hmm. you know, and, uh, while still working, I work, um, uh, I wouldn't say part-time, maybe two days out the week, still at Doc 580. Mm-hmm. I was going to, you know, school as a junior at Columbus Downtown. Um, they were teaching me things at the, at the restaurant that I wasn't learning in school. You know, so I'm like, all right, I'm going to use this. Mm-hmm. But then when I ask the teachers about it, they'd be like, oh, we're not going to do that this year. You know, I'm like, OK, that's mm-hmm. great. You know, I'd maybe love to learn about it if we have time afterwards, yeah. you know, and then going into my senior year, we're progressing, but we're still not learning on the scale that I would have loved to learn. Or mm-hmm. even in my extra time, if I'm asking, I didn't learn, you know, what I was wanting to. Also, uh, if I could go back and give those students like an extra push, mm-hmm. you know, just let them know, like, hey, this is where you're going to be. You know, when you finish school and, you know, also sometimes uh, I'll say when I went back to Columbus downtown to speak to the students, I spoke on my college, uh, my time in college. Mm-hmm. It wasn't the greatest for me, um, but I do appreciate going there and getting through that time. And it did propel me, uh, but also, you know, letting students know sometimes for for culinary college, you can go to college or you may not. You know, um, college will definitely propel you further. Mm-hmm. But um, not going to college, you may learn different tricks. It's, it's gonna, you're going to get to the same place, maybe different times. Yeah. But you're going to get, you know, you're going to have the same goal in mind. So all those experiences you've had, and, and you want to you be an instructor yes. so you can be a catalyst in the lives of other persons. Yeah. But right now, <laughs> you are the executive chef. <laughs> the executive chef. How's that, how's that, how's that feel when, when people say that? It's surreal. Mm-hmm. It's surreal. Because um, growing up watching Food Network, I remember watching Chopped, and there's executive chefs on there, and they're like 28 years old, mm-hmm. where I am right now. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, how? I see, I, I'm mm-hmm. putting myself in their shoes, or um, I'm trying to put myself in their shoes. I'm like, all right, I'm 22. I'm just a line cook. I haven't even hit any part of management and I'm pretty sure, you know, any, anybody who hired me was not thinking of me in a management role at that time. Although I was pushing for it, Mm -hmm. you know, I had not gotten there yet. So I'm like, how are they executive chef? I've been in this place for this long and I've put everything I could into it. Nobody sees it, but yet this other person is, um, it's just persistence, Mm -hmm. passion persistence and passion and then someone saw something in you someone yes and then gave you the opportunity so at at um at asterisk yeah what's uh tell me a little bit tell us a little bit about the restaurant what makes that restaurant special besides you being there (laughs) what makes asterisk (laughs) special so i like to say first off we do upscale comfort food wait say that again we do upscale comfort food upscale comfort comfort food. food yes okay that is it that is it upscale comfort food um and that is our lunch and dinner side Mm -hmm. You know, in the morning time or afternoon. So we open from uh, 12 p.m. uh, to 10 Mm -hmm. uh, on the weekends. And then Tuesday through Thursday, we're open from 12 to 9. Mm -hmm. Sunday's 12 to 8. But we do tea service every day. What's tea service? Tea service. It's like your English tea service. We have about. With with the pinky up? With the pinky up. Okay. You you can come in dressed up. You can come in dressed Mm -hmm. down. We accept you all. But um, we have about 35 different teas that we get in. Uh, some of our teas are mixed in house to create certain flavors. So this is not just so you can't go get a box of Lipton. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. You cannot get a box of Lipton. What's celestial season? <laughs> <this? laughs> right. No. So we have about thirty-five mm. different teas you can get. We have two packages of petite tea, which you get five tea sandwiches. It's perfect for one person. You get your choice of uh, soup. Which our house soup is tomato bisque, or our classic salad. Wait, wait. 
You, t- you said soup. Yeah. soup. And I digress for a yeah. while. <laughs> you did for me this butternut oh, yeah. squash <laughs> soup. <laughs> Have you put them on about that? Have I you- did that uh, maybe a year or two ago. Okay. I did that, and that was a hit. That, that, was, was, a, listen, that was a good I'm sure it was a hit. <laughs> listen, man. <laughs> I want. I wanted to put that in my veins. That was, <laughs> just, I have to bring that back, you know, then. and just you know, take a shower in that. that <laughs> that's how good that was. I'm sorry, but no, I thank you. Yeah, so thank you. So different teas. Yes, yeah, so we do the teas. Um, super salad. Mm-hmm. Our five tea sandwiches. So we have ten all day. Uh, you can choose from those ten, mix and match however you want. And then we have a pastry chef, Christy Long. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's been there since day one. She's 73 years old. Wow. And she makes all of our pastries and desserts. Mm -hmm. Uh, We have about five scones on the menu at all times and five tea desserts you can choose from. And then with our full tea, that's perfect for two people. You get um, same choice of super salad, uh, 10 tea sandwiches, and then uh, two scones and two desserts. Listen, man, I'm gaining weight. just so, <laughs> so, And that's just that's just mm-hmm. tea service alone. OK, so, you know, if tea service is elevated like that. Of course, we're going to take, you know, lunch and dinner and we're, we're, we're going to we're going to put it up there. So it's elevated comfort. Food. Yes. You know, I'm a wing connoisseur. Yeah. I love, <laughs> I love wings, y'all. This is brother right here. <laughs> I knew it was coming. <laughs> you made some, I forget what they were. You made some wings. Yes. And I, and I, I inhaled them. Yeah. <laughs> and I just remember I was eating them and all I, all I could, it, this is the thing. Mm. They were so good that I didn't want to eat them. Mm. <laughs> Because they would be gone. Yeah, they would be. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, that's how good they were. Yeah. I, I couldn't eat them so fast. I wanted to literally yeah. savor <laughs> every bite. Thank and you. it really caused me to just slow down yeah. and enjoy the food. That's yeah. how good it was. Yeah. And, and see, it made, it, I'm still smiling. Yes. <laughs> you know, from that experience. That's yeah. That experience, and I believe that at, at the Astor Supper Club, mm-hmm. and, and Western Villa Highway, and what are, what are your areas of uh, areas? What are your hours of operation again? Hours of operation: so Tuesday through Thursday, we are twelve to nine p.m. Mm-hmm. Uh, Friday, Saturday, we are twelve to ten p.m., and then Sunday, we are twelve to eight. Okay, y'all heard that. Now yeah. I'm, I want everybody. I'm serious. <laughs> uh, up to get to the Asterisk Supper Club. Please. And when you get out there, tell, tell them that David Carter is a Catalyst podcast. Yes. Um, sent you. And they'll, and I'm sure, you know, Chef Dez will come out. Oh, I'm coming out. Yeah, he'll come out. I love and be like, you know, <laughs> so glad to see you. What, before we close, what are some of your inspirations? How do you get inspiration for the menu? And yeah. you said you're, you're telling a story with the food. Where do you get these inspiration for, um, from? And how does it go from your inspiration to the plate? So inspirations that 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 goes everywhere. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I watch a little bit of Chopped. Mm-hmm. Um, I love the thought process mm-hmm. that comes with. You know, people are given a basket of ingredients. Mm-hmm. All four people. Uh, yeah, they're you given know? a basket of ingredients. Yeah, the same ingredients. Yes, okay. But you get four different dishes at the end. Yeah, you know, and I love watching that thought process. Um, to Top Chef, you know, you are given uh, chefs with uh, awards that you know uh, nationally recognized awards um they come in given you know a basket as well mm-hmm. but they're put to the fire and they're really pushed you know to see what they can come up with at the end i love stuff like that mm-hmm. um but oh uh, my life you know mm-hmm. what have i eaten in connecticut um what have i eaten when i've traveled mm-hmm. you know what are different regions i know comfort food is one thing that people just think oh you know for us mm-hmm. my family dinners you know every sunday in connecticut it's mac and cheese you know chicken but mm-hmm. comfort food for us is that yeah. comfort food for somebody else may be, you know, spaghetti. Mm-hmm. Comfort food for somebody else may be something else different. So I don't want Astros to just be, oh, this is my comfort food. Mm-hmm. No. Comfort food is, is, is whatever you want it to be. So it's, it's recognizing and drawing in all the, 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 the diversity of culture. Yes, yeah. And bringing that comfort food to the Astros Supper yeah. Club. With your love and with yeah. your passion and the, your perseverance. And yes. so with that, before we close, um, what advice yeah. would you give to our listeners um, as it relates to aspiring um, mm. to fulfill their dreams yeah. and their aspirations, no matter what the obstacles are no that matter. they might come up? What, what, what advice would you give to them? I say don't back down. Mm-hmm. Don't back down. No matter what people see in you or don't see any, mm-hmm. 
you know, no matter what opportunities people give you, um, as long as you have it in you, you know, you're going to make it, you know, if God gave it to you, Mm -hmm. there's no way it's going to fail. Don't back (laughs) down. Yeah. Keep pressing toward the mark. Yeah. You know, and be persistent about it. Yeah. And I want you to know, uh, Des, in in all sincerity, I, and I don't want to sound patronized or anything Mm -hmm. like that, but I'm so proud of you. Thank you. And what you've done, because, you know, like I said, you know, I believed in you. Yeah. And I, and I never, if you didn't tell me that, I never would have known mm. that <laughs> <laughs> I was your culinary <laughs> guinea pig. Yes. <laughs> and I'm, st- listen, and the food mm. that you created for me, because mm. I have a, you know, a very sensitive palate mm. and, you know, I don't eat everybody's food. Yeah. <laughs> and so you were in my house. Mm. I, you had the integrity. I gave you, mm. I just gave you the money. You told me this is what you're going to prepare. Mm. And you handled it. And yeah. so, man, I just, I just want you to know, um, I'm godly proud of you. Oh. And knowing your family, you come from some great stock. And um, man, I'm looking forward to you just going, you know, to the next level. Chopped. Yeah. <laughs> Chopped. We want to We're see coming. this, man. <laughs> We're Chopped. coming. We're coming for you. We're coming. All We're right. Coming. Look, Desmond, it's, it's been a pleasure having you on here and um i look forward to you know great success and thank you in the future and and, and know this um be open to whatever mm-hmm. direction um, and you know this that the lord has for you yeah um yeah. because i know you want to pour into other people mm. um, and, and instruct them but who knows what god has for you my brother That's it's me. been a pleasure no thank you i All appreciate right. it All right. i appreciate it this is chef <laughs> Executive chef, <laughs> executive. <laughs> Desmond Reed, not sous, sous chef, not line cook, mm. not watcher. He's the executive chef of the Astor Supper Club in Westerville, Ohio. And this is David Carter for David Carter's Catalyst <laughs> Podcast. And check us out wherever you get your yeah. uh, your podcast on Spotify um, or on Apple iTunes, Apple Podcasts, and check us out. But please be sure and go by the Astor Supper Club in Westerville, Ohio. This is David Carter for David Carter's Catalyst Podcast. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.